So, so the premise is, and I, oh, here go Leah right here. The, um, the premise is real simple, and it's just because I know that a lot of players come back from overseas, whether um, male athletes or female athletes, and they have a hard time transitioning back into the real world because um, they've been doing basketball for so long, and now that basketball is no longer there, no longer an option, they struggle, and they, just, they don't know what to do as far as getting into the, whatever fields may be. And I don't know if this can grow into like a support network, but I'm sure that you guys in New York, New Jersey base, you're, you're not alone. I'm sure that it happens throughout the country. And I brought on Nicole in because she's actually in Indonesia. Obviously, you guys did pro, you did, you guys did pro stuff all across the water. Nicole did maybe ten years. Indonesia did with three years. Jasmine did one. Book did one. Aaliyah did a half. Eric, I think he went straight to coaching, right? So it's yeah. a different dynamic between between everyone. So I was just like mm -hmm. a support network of what is the best routine? Because I know that most people are going to say connect with your AU coach, get into coaching. Like that shit may not be for everybody. Like that may not or, be yeah. it. That may not be yeah, and that's obvious because you look at the New York City basketball landscape, there aren't that many female athletes or uh, coaches. So where are all the players? What's going on? So it's just like open forum and I will start off with the oldest person here other than myself, Nicole. Um so tell me, Nicole, when you came back from overseas, when it was done, done, um, what, what was the next step or the first step for you as far as getting back into the acclimated to the real world? Um, first thing first, when I came back from overseas and I said I was done, done, I really wasn't done, done. But uh -huh. just because that's what's so much playing, no matter what, but in all reality, it does come to an end. Uh -huh. and that's something that young athletes really need to understand. Like you can love the game ever, but you cannot play the game. Ever. So right. when I came home and it really hit me that it was done, um, my first thing that I did, I reached out to my people, the people that I networked with while I was overseas. Um, uh -huh. I think that's important for people outside of sports. Um, just network for anybody, honestly, because it, it's hard. It's hard after playing, especially for me, after playing 10 years, I was so, like, disconnected with the current coaches. So it was hard for me to get a coaching position. Right. Unless contacting, like, Coach Q back to Syracuse, go back to Syracuse. That would have probably been my only option, but so disconnected. It was hard for me to get a coaching position. So my uh -huh. next step, you know, I started my camps and stuff, so I like working with young athletes. So my next step was teaching. Who would have right. thought I would? So um, I'm currently a PE teacher, so I just really um, continue to network with people. Um, I had great connections that helped me to get where I am right now mm -hmm. and happy where I'm at. So I would definitely say network with people outside of sports. Just network with everybody. Honestly, just have some type of connection with people. Um, that's very important. Now, um, oh, somebody got their radio on or something in the back? <laughs> I hear something. Um, uh, Denasia, you currently just got a job as a head coach at a, um, at a prep school. Um, and it took you two years after you graduated with four years ago. You graduated four years ago, right? Oh, uh, yeah, four years ago. So what was that trip? What was that transition like for you? Because um, now you're, you're, you're in a, a prep school coaching. Mm -hmm. uh, when I first came back from overseas, I just reached out to everybody, all the coaches that I played against. Um, my head coach, obviously, first, and then everybody else around the league. And then that's how I ended up getting connected with Stephen and Hall. Um, but in this, this go around, when I was looking for jobs again, I was kind of just open to everything because – on the college level, it's to me it felt like I was playing again, or like you know, like I was on that on that regimen again, and it, it didn't feel like it was exactly for me. So I just opened up my options to the the high school level. Like I was volunteering at first mm -hmm. um, with the high school that I came from, that I played at. Um, you know, it wasn't bad because it's it's a lot less that goes into it. It's more just about developing the girls I feel like and you take all like all the politics and all of that crap out of it. Um right. But with this go around it was it was really just reaching out to anybody that I knew might have a connection. Like that's really what you gotta do. As cliche as it sounds, I feel like 
that's really what you gotta do. Anybody that you feel like has some type of power. Now, when you say reach out, I know Slinky said it also. What exactly you mean as far as reach out? And I'm saying that because Boogie just graduated a year ago. Uh, mm -hmm. Jazz, Jazz was two years ago. Like they're still they're still in that phase right now, trying to figure shit out. Like when you say reach mm -hmm. out, what do you mean like emails or? Call? Yeah, I I did I did emails. I did a lot of personal emails. Um, people that I really kind of uh, know knew my character. That's why it was mm -hmm. more of the coaches that were around the league because you know at least they saw me on the court. They saw me at media days. That you know they could kind of vouch for a little bit of my character so um a lot of emailing um yeah not not too not too much more personal than that i went um at first um i i reached out in, in dms too on twitter like a lot of college coaches are on twitter heavily so i did that as well uh -huh. um i go to uh, somebody just left i'll go to uh erica because you jump right into coaching right after school. Like, yeah. what, what 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 happened as far as you not pursuing the professional ranks and you just jumping right into the coaching aspect? Um. Well, I was. Um. I was working out. Had an agent. Was just waiting to go somewhere. Um. My one of my assistants that was at Delaware, where I played at, became the head coach at FIU. So she knew that I eventually I wanted to be a coach and all that good stuff. Um. So. She knew I was trying to do the overseas thing, so she had just called me one day out the blue because we just we just were talking regular. You know, she was just seeing if I was good. She was trying to connect me with some more people to get, you know, get a job out overseas. And mm -hmm. she was like, yo, I got a position on my staff, you know, as a video person, like, do you want it? And I was just like, I need a couple weeks, you know what I mean? Because I wasn't ready mm -hmm. to give a ball. Like, I just, you know, I wasn't ready, so... I thought about it. Um, so the reason why I did it is just because, you know, I want to be a head coach one day at Division One level. And I felt like, you know, the quicker I get in, not saying that it's easy to get to the top, but just the quicker and the younger I got in, um, you know, I could be a head coach in my, you know, my late 30s, going in my 40s, and I'm young. Like, that's young in this right. business. Like, right. I'm a head coach. Um, so I, I was like, you know, I might as well get in now, learn it while I'm young, young enough, you know and stuff like that and just be connected with a lot of the people. Um, so that was really my whole thing on why why I chose to just give it up that, you know, like Nicole said, like ball ends at some point and you just gotta realize like it ain't it ain't forever. You know what I mean? And the good thing about this coaching stuff is you do get to play with the kids. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like you still gonna get your workout and you get your runs and you know you get to talk a little jump to them. Um so that's fun. Um it's not the same um but it but it's still fun. Um but I wouldn't change my decision you know, for the world, I think that is great. You know, I love giving back to the game and being around these kids every day and just trying to show them the right way to do things. So that was my, that was really my whole reason why I was just like, you know what, ball over for me. Right. So Can now I say I'm going to shoot to, um, go, 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 anytime. Sorry, but I, want, I just wanted to follow up on what Erica said. Um, She said she got in, like, it wasn't the position that she wanted right away, but she just got in no matter what. Like, right. if you can get in, like, even if it's the lowest position, mm -hmm. uh, GM or did I say it right? G GM. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, there, and, and, you know, just start. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, I was gonna say because you, that's a good segue because two of the people here, Danasia and also Aaliyah, they started out as GAs, mm -hmm. and Correct. everyone for the most part, everyone for the most part graduated debt free, right? So yeah. my thing is, if, we, if you graduated debt free, you may not have the initial need to get to work mm -hmm. as, as soon as possible. So mm -hmm. you, you can you have two years of fuck around for the lack of a better phrase, yeah. and, and really be seen mm -hmm. a little bit. From the, so unless um, you got you super about, connections. You more you most likely yeah. gonna start as a GA or a video coordinator, right? Because a lot of a lot of these coaches want people with experience, and obviously you don't have none yet. Yeah, so. yeah. So you gotta start, start at the bottom. Yeah, unless you just get lucky and your head coach right. got a position and they really love you, because right. they want yeah. you to just talk exactly. about you know your time being there. Like it ain't you know what I mean? It ain't gonna happen that quick. You know, some people get blessed. I know there's plenty of people that I'm like, how did how are they higher right. than me? And I've been in here way longer than them. Right. Which is fine. Everybody's journey is different at the end of the day. 
Um, so you can't get mad at that. You just gotta work hard. But like, but like Nicole said, and D, like if you can get in in any position, you you gotta get in because it's a whole different you know aspect that you deal with every day on a day to day basis, and you don't even realize like the stuff that goes into college basketball until you're actually in it and you're doing it every single day. Um, so if you could be in any position, at the end of the day, that's experience because I'm not gonna go hire somebody that don't know anything that goes on in the college world in the background. And right. I have, you know, I was a GA or a video coordinator that knows how to do everything. I'm not going to do that. I know I'm not going to do that. You know, I want somebody that's been but around it. That. They know how it works and, and stuff like that. They may not have the coaching experience, but they've been around my kids. They've been around me as, as a head coach and as a boss and know how I work and like things. Um, but it's just different. Like, a lot of people in this world don't really know what goes into it. And just the things that we do daily to make it to make it work, they only see the, you know, pretty picture of things. Um, but it, it's a lot, you know. It's time consuming. It's a lot to make it make it go and make it look good to everybody else. So. All the time consuming. Yeah. Uh, uh, Aaliyah, uh, grad assistant, master's degree in hand. What 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 made you decide to go get a grad assistant position? Uh, I'm gonna be honest. It just fell into my lap. Um, just you know, I went overseas, played half a, half a season. Came home and I was at the point where I didn't know what I wanted to do, honestly. But mm -hmm. um, I ended up, you know, continuing to pursue my basketball career. So I was just getting in the gym, working out damn near every day. On top of the fact I was working out kids, training kids, also like going to like different basketball events, uh, mainly men. Um, I mean boys, boys events, and just watching kids play. So. Um, Mm -hmm. Due to that, um, I ended up getting the opportunity to work the Syracuse Boys Club. And um, from there, I met some good people. So then, as time went on, I ended up, well, before the Syracuse camp, I ended up going to the Final Four. And I was going to the Final Four as a player. So I was going uh -huh. to the, the Combine. And at, at the time, I had a friend who was a coach at the D2 level, and he told me to come to the convention with him. So I went to the convention with him and I ran into the, I think she was the associate head. D, what was on TP at the time at St. John? When we was there, yeah, associate head? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I ran into Tasha Poyna, who was the associate head coach at St. John's while I was there. And um, she was in the transition of be, uh, becoming the head coach at the University of Illinois Chicago. So while she seen me there, she just threw it at me and saying, hey, uh, do you mind being a GA? I didn't give her an answer right away because I knew if you become a GA, I'm going to have to stop playing. And I just wasn't too sure at the time, like, hey, I'm going to have to give up my basketball career. Then again, I got to go get my master's. I don't, I don't really like school. I'm be honest with you. I don't like school. Right. So then over time, I just thought about it because as an athlete, I felt like the only thing I knew was basketball. Like, just that's just what I always did. I just always thought, like, I just know basketball. I just know basketball. And I need to be well-rounded, and I told myself, and I was like, you know what, I think, I think it's time to throw in the towel, and, you know, go be a GA. And I just told myself, like, it's time for me to stretch myself, because I just thought, I just, I just didn't know it as Aaliyah, the basketball player, that's all she knew. Because, like, just the four years that I spent in college and then going overseas, it was just, like, that's all I knew, like, just Aaliyah, the basketball player, the basketball player. And I felt like it's more to me, and I want to stretch myself. So then that's when I took the opportunity to go be a GA. Gotcha. And I, I, I'm sure that uh, Coach Pointer definitely needed you out there because I know you bust, they bust a little bit on the court. <laughs> that team was in develop, uh, was a developing team. <laughs> it was a developing team. <laughs> now, Jag. Yo, hey, yo if y'all can get to the final four, too, if y'all want to get into it, if you can get to the final four, that's like one of the big stepping stones. To, um, See that, that, that hurt a couple people. That hurt a couple people this year, D, because there was no yeah. final four. Oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah, exactly. There was no <laughs> final four. Nah, yeah, OD. No. That's why I ended up going to high school level too, because I'm like, I'm not banking on college turning around or whatever's going to happen with that. I don't know. So right, I ain't want to wait till the end of the summer to find a job. So mm -hmm. now, so now, you, now you coaching? Now you coaching high school now? Yeah, prep team, high school. Okay. Now, yeah. Jazz, your your career is a little different than most. You play for the national team. Uh, how was that transition? Now you're coming back to Far Rockaway. <laughs> it's a little different being in Nigeria <laughs> than being in Far Rockaway. But 
how was that transition as far as you like dealing with that type of that, that type of transition? Well, everybody spoke of like the transition. I think I want to speak more of the an emotional aspect. I feel like Aaliyah like gave me a good transition to that because okay. um, when you've been hooping since a little girl, you got these dreams of like the league, and you and you don't know nothing about the politics and everything that go into it. So you just thinking like everything gonna go. You gonna go to get a scholarship, go to college, then you gonna just go play pro, mm-hmm. right? And then when it don't happen, you just like, okay, so what do I do now? <laughs> and things are not exactly how you thought they was going to be. And with you dedicating so much of your life to basketball, like your mind, body, and soul, you sometimes feel lost. Like you don't, like you don't even know yourself really. Like you dedicated so much to the game that you just feel like, well, who, who am I really without the game? Right. And I feel like that's where I spent most of my time, like after coming back from the Nigerian team, like, probably in November, I just decided, like, I don't want to hoop anymore, for real. Like, I want to start, you know, building a different kind of foundation for myself, like, and who I am outside of that. And um, I still love the game and miss it all the time, but now I'm exploring different parts of myself that I never knew. Like, I'm deciding, like, what I want to do with myself, what I'm capable of doing. I'm viewing my potential from a different scale now. And, I mean... It has its lows, honestly, because you feel like you don't know anything. Like, I'm just out here, like, just exploring, really. Like, I feel like I really don't know other things that I like to do or what I would be interested in or how to even go about getting a job outside of, like, freelance work, outside of, like, you know, modeling, acting, like, those kind of independent entrepreneur gigs. You know what I mean? So it's like, okay, well, I haven't networked. I haven't... um, I haven't did internships, like I haven't ever had a job. So it's just like, okay, well, what connects do I have? Who do I know in these different rooms that I can connect with that can understand my process and my journey and know all that the game gave to me? The discipline, you know what I mean? Like the good character and all of that. And they understand that about me and they can put me on to some things. So, I mean, that's what it was like really about for me, like my journey after that. So it's more of the mental, you try to understand the mental and get to know you, Jasmine and Waji, as opposed to Jasmine the baller. Yep, exactly. And okay. I feel like there's not enough like programs or like things to help athletes transition from like athlete life in college to like real world because like everybody don't go play pro. Some people right. are just literally using the scholarship to get them through a free education. Mm-hmm. just something to do really and then when they graduate they like lost souls really like and so I actually just um created like a, a woman's kind of like a woman's mentoring like slash empowerment business for like middle uh-huh. school students and um Fire. and I obviously didn't launch it yet and with the coronavirus and everything like that it got a step back so now I actually got a real job my first real job but uh, I designed that program to like learn themselves at a younger age so that they can, it might not be exactly what you're going to do, but you got some idea of what you like to do and what you don't like to do so it can navigate your success better. Right. I think um, before we get to Boogie, I think um, there's a missing gap, and I think yeah. this could be like a career development type of job where like an agency of some sort where you have athletes that come across both male and female, they come back and they need like a, a halfway house to get them a job because they now don't, they don't know who to reach out to because everyone, everyone's not destined to be a coach. Everyone's not destined to be a uh, supervisor. Yeah, like somebody right. has to find this job that, suits, that best suits their abilities and stuff like that. I think that's a missing piece also. But well, anyway. I can see you putting something together like that. That's why we're doing this. <laughs> um, <boogie. laughs> Boogie, um, so you're you're the you're the youngest of the, everyone here, I think, basketball wise. So you just graduated, you just finished one year um, overseas. Um, you were in uh, what country again? Romania. Yeah, yeah, Romania. Romania. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Heard about that? Not, <laughs> not not the best paying position, no. <laughs> but but it's still overseas nonetheless. So now you're in a situation where you're trying to come back home um, because you're weighing an option. Like, do I get this fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars a month, or do I work at the local local supermarket, or whatever? I'm not disrespecting. I'm just saying, like, that's a low low, low paying position. So, what, where, mm-hmm. where are you at in this whole thing right now? See, I think for me, like, 
the biggest thing is like you said is like do I want to continue to play or not and like getting this experience overseas this year like I'm torn in between like I did really well basketball wise but the overseas life like I didn't I didn't really think it was for me like I didn't like you can't get in the gym when you want to like you can't just go and like release like so once you have practice like that's it so for the rest of the day most part I couldn't even travel because my schedule was like jammed up until Sunday so most part mm-hmm. I'm sitting in my I'm sitting in my my apartment like well damn like <laughs> I don't like this life so I think for me now is like do I do I want to continue to play because I love the game like Slinky said you're always going to love the game but do I want to continue mm-hmm. to play or like what do I do but the biggest thing is like I don't know my next step and like I don't know what to do because like Jazz said it's like all you know is this basketball person and all you know is like, well, I know how to play ball. I know how to do this. Like, but do I want to be a coach? Like, so at this point, I really don't have much to say because I don't know. Like, and I'm sure each and every one of you were in this, in the step, but it's like, when do you know is the right time to like throw in the towel? Because I know the money that I'm making overseas, that is not the life I want to live. Slinky, um, old head, or one of the old heads. <laughs> Um, I knew when it was over when my knees gave out. One. <laughs> um, I think the with me, I kind of knew that I wanted to stay involved in sports. So after playing basketball, I knew I either wanted to coach, become an um, athletic director, assistant athletic director, somewhere in the administrative roles, or a PE teacher. I wanted to stay involved in sports no matter what. So I kind of knew that. Mm -hmm. Um, Uh, I think that's probably the only difference. But with that being said, after playing, I still didn't just have the opportunity to just jump into it. I still had to find my networking sources. I had to apply. I still had to go through the steps. And it actually took me almost a year to get to where I wanted to be. So, I mean, it doesn't happen right away. Can I, can I say this, Boogie? I don't know if, if anybody ever thought about this. I'm sure you guys have. Um, being a referee. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's true. I yeah. did that, too. I was actually supposed to take classes in February for that. Then I think that's a good opportunity for players, former players, to get back into it. It just keeps you in shape, obviously. And then as you're around the game and you get to see the youngins coming up because they probably look up to you at a certain, for a certain scheme also. And then you can politic because you're, you're going to see the coaches that you once coached played against you or coach against you at some point. So that may be something. I, I, can, mention that you, I can mention that. I was going to do that before. I can, I can send um, well, you, you gotta um, take class, a man. contact. Yeah. Oh, yeah I can send you a, a guy wait, that wait, you can contact so to email him. Um, it's, it's a course for it, basically. It's like, I want to say a couple weeks if that um, right. course and mm-hmm. you, you just take it and then but you gotta, you basically gotta get linked in with uh, people who gonna set you up for games. Yeah, so you, need got be, to DD. you will you need to be on the board. Will, like, you gotta be on the. Say it again, mm-hmm. With officiating, you will, you will get into with the people because they'll actually look for you mm-hmm. because they're looking for yeah. women officials. One, especially if you just Definitely. finished playing the game, so you're still kind of athletic. You have the body, mm-hmm. and I, that's what I was doing before I got into teaching, and I, also before I got pregnant. So. Um, you know, I I would probably stay with officiating because one, it was easy money. You move up quick. Like I got an offer to ref at at uh Division three games, and I was I was officiating for like two months. Like you move up mm-hmm. really fast. Once you move mm-hmm. up, it's so much money. It's like it's it's a good career. So it, it's definitely something to consider, and it's easy to get in once you get in. Yeah, it is. Good. Yeah. Aaliyah. If, if um, D. Grant can get you a plug, I got a couple of plugs also that help you out. And particularly, like she mentioned, like Slinky mentioned, you just finished playing, you're athletic, people will know who you are, you're going to run around, you're loud, and you look the part. Definitely in New York, people going to know you. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're going to be good. Yep. I mean, and, sure. and with your pop, people going to want to put you in just because of that. that that's the main reason why I love people want to get it in. Get mm-hmm. it in because of my pop. Yep. So, so, why nobody chose to go AAU route? <laughs> we, yo, me and Aaliyah were thinking about that. It's crazy. Me, Aaliyah, and Jay, we just started thinking about that. But, I mean, it really, uh, to me, I didn't really think that it was, um, I'm not going to lie with y'all. At first, when I first stopped playing, it was really more about the money to me because I was making great money overseas, like, great money. So, 
it was like, you know, I just came from making tax free money that I was just putting in my pocket. Like, I don't want to be, you know, just working any old place. So, um, I was, I wasn't really thinking that AAU was bringing in too much money. That's why I never really took a look into it. I'm a, I'm a fuck I actually with the got like oh, opportunity. Who did jazz? Yeah, no, I was about to say I actually got like opportunity to like go coach like with AAU, but I was just like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't really want to coach personally, but AAU is like a full time commitment. Like, you know, and I feel like you shouldn't do anything unless you're fully invested, especially if it got to do with people's futures or something they're passionate about. Right. So I would never, you know, put myself in a position that I'm not ready to be in and I'm not ready to dedicate myself full time to, you know, mm-hmm. I, I would under girls like traveling with them. So. My bad. Right. Yeah. Right. I, my, my bad. Go ahead. No, I was going to, I was going to do some math for her real quick. If you have a team of 10 players and 10 players pay $1,000, your only expenses is local tournaments and then also uniforms and gym time. So your gym time is going to be split in half between your team and another team. So you pay like $1,000 plus a, a, a season. That's one kid. You have $9,000 still remaining. The kids play for their uniforms and the kids pay for their training. So you're really you're making $9,000 on each, kid, on each team that you have. Imagine mm-hmm. having five teams. Five teams, you just made forty five thousand, forty five hundred, whatever the number is, thousands of dollars in that one mm-hmm. season. So if there's money as the boss of the AU team, I think Jazz, you would probably offer a coaching position. He wears boss. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah boss. You didn't say coach. Yeah. Oh, this is <laughs> coaching for some. Yeah, coaching is trash. You just get like a thousand dollars. That's why I was like, no. Trash. If you create your own team and you can you can convince players to really uh, uh, invest in you and what your vision. You can make mm-hmm. you can make a lot of money. You you can really make a lot of money. Um, we were, we were thinking about that. So. Yeah, no, I, I was gonna say something like that too. Like you right, like if you the boss, you know, what I mean? it's money in that. It's money. If if you yeah. if you do it the right way and you get kids to buy into you, the AU route was money. And I would say more so like if you actually do want to get into coaching. Um, I thought about that because I didn't know that I would get an opportunity. I was just you know I was fortunate and blessed to get one. Um, to do it, and I was gonna be a coach with the, you know, with the Sparks, um, and do that. Um, what I I was talking to Lee about this earlier, like that's a great opportunity too. Um, it's very different. Um, the commitment at the college level is way more commitment committed than the AU level, like way more. Like your life is consumed with college basketball, just like if you were an athlete, but times ten because well, you're now in the background of everything. You got to make sure your kids is good. You got to yeah. make sure your that's boss is good. You got to make sure you got to make sure. You gotta make sure that's you want to coach. Yeah, so the AU scene is a little bit different. You know, it's like a little summer, and you know, it's, it's certain months where it's like live period and stuff like that. Um, so I would say more so like you want to coach and you're not really ready to, cause you, cause we all young, like to ready to really give your life to, you know, what I'm saying that college world, like all over would, again, you mean? Um, yeah, exactly. yeah, basically, basically, and just and it is even more. It's it's, it's it's way it's way deeper than a lot of people think. Your life is really that. Um, so the, you know, the especially AU, if you're really the, traveling too, that's the part that I hate. Exactly, I ain't gonna lie to you. Like that's why I'm like I'm good. I hated to travel. Mm-hmm. Yup. Yep. Well, and then, like in the AU scene, yeah, in Tennessee, in the AU scene, like if you want to eventually get to college when you get older, you won't get there because I know people that started off as AU coaches and high school coaches, and they know oh. so many people because they had kids. Like they have mm-hmm. kids that they're going to recruit, so they build relationships with these coaches. And at right. the end of the day, they could coach because their team is somewhat good for them to be trying to recruit kids that have power fives. And, and all right. this stuff. So now by the time they get in, you know all these big time people and you already showed that you could coach, you gonna you gonna move up quick just because you I, know I, people I, and you connected. I would say that's that's big also, at least for the boys side. If you have a cadre of players that you can have like underneath you a little bit and coaches will see that, like well, like today she's gonna be at a prep school. If she's at a prep school, she has a power five girl every year, a power five girl every year. They're gonna say, mm-hmm. I need to mess with yeah, her. Yeah, they're gonna start flocking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they're gonna they're gonna keep coming. They're gonna keep coming. I think that'd be a good thing for some people. But again, the AAU thing, you do make a lot of money as the boss. Mm-hmm. I wanted. To, I was thinking about turning my team into an AAU team. If we, I plan on getting some some of the top girls in Jersey. So 
if I could just transition them and, and build more chemistry with them, so they'll just be playing all throughout the summer as well. The only thing about that, though, D, because it may be a conflict of interest because you're taking money from kids that's on your team. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you, you're kind of taking money from – you could have – Erica could be the coach, and you could be like the person behind the scenes. But it's just like you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You swindling them uh -huh. for money. But I would be careful. Boogie, <laughs> my suggestion to you would be um, do that referee thing. But your name is big enough in Long Island. AAU may not be a bad thing for you as the boss. What well, AAU team you play for? I I play for Lightning. Terrible ass team. <laughs> oh, I'm the Lightning. Oh, Long Island. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You know any connections though? Like, have you spoken to them? Have you reached out to any of them? No, nah, not really. The guy, Mike Flynn, that's who runs Island Garden. Y'all know Island Garden, right? Yeah, we know. The, Mike Flynn don't run Island Garden. No, Wait, you it's said Mike Flynn. It's not, it's, not, it's not the Philly Bells Mike Flynn. It's a different Mike Flynn. Oh, I'm oh, about to say no, he. No, no, no. He doesn't, he doesn't <laughs> like me. No, that Mike Flynn doesn't like me. Like he, he doesn't, he doesn't like me because I didn't play. For that the Mike Flynn is. Tough. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> we talk about that. We have a college coach on here. She cannot talk about Mike Flynn. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, the guy, the guy who runs that that program and that he's all about the money for himself. So it's kind of, it's it's tough. I don't know. I don't really have connections out there like that. <laughs> Your name no, big enough though in the city, like you could get connected with. Gauchos, Exodus. Like at the end of the day, even if you starting on a younger team, you gotta think like if you building them kids up and developing them, you gonna just keep going. I'm now I'm coaching these kids so they get older. So now at that point they in high school, they getting recruited. Yeah, like you like I did that. You know what I mean? Like because a lot of these young like I, I'm not even gonna lie. Like a lot of these young young kids that's the seventh eighth grade. Like it's like this area about to get lit again like you know what i mean like it kind of we kind of fell off mm -hmm. a little bit after like all of right. like young, young yeah that's what i was saying new, new york down. new jersey we fell off yeah, yeah. but, no, these, but i'm right. telling you these young kids man these seven six seven to eighth graders nasty they it's gonna be like how we play all over again they they they, they like that like it's gonna be it's you gonna know, be a problem like you you know why i think that they're very skilled they're very 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 skilled exactly and particularly and i and i hate to say this boogie in in your neck of the woods in long island that's where the money is and those kids mm -hmm. are in a position where they can they can hire me to come and do a lot of training so they're very very skilled and they have a lot of money so i would do yeah. long island and then i would just be in long island just build that team up maybe plug them with the renegades plug them with the exodus or whatever the case may be and then that's your girl. Those are your girls. You move up with them. Next thing you know, you want to go college job. Yep. And like Mark said, like at the end of the day, people now is different, man. People going to spend money because they want their kid to get a scholarship at the end of the day. Like they think that all these trainers that have them doing nine different million ball handling drills and shooting Word. drills and 90 million layup moves. Like they think that's what's going to get them a scholarship. So parents is paying. Like they don't, it's, it's not like how we were. Like we just in the trenches in a park, like, you know what I mean? Getting buckets. Like yeah, they sure. want, they want all the trainers. They want all the best skill exactly. development. They want all that for their kid. Cause they think that that's really what's getting them, their kid the scholarship. So it's crazy to say it, but parents going to pay money. Like, you know what I mean? Oh wow. She played at so-and-so. She big time. Like she, I want her to train my daughter. Like, it's crazy. Go, it, it's, it's real talk. It is. Um, Nicole, because Nicole, Nicole actually, when she came back, she helped out in, in my gym a little bit also for a couple of weeks. Um, how was that transition, Slinky, as far as being a trainer, compared from a player to a trainer? Um, it was definitely different. Um, I think how I trained, I trained how – I was being coached. Does that make sense? Like how yeah, my coaches time. taught me how to play, that's how I tried to train. And I think that was not the best way, um, especially with the kids that were in the gym. But um, it's definitely a, a different transition. Mm -hmm. um, if I stay in training, I know I will have to train differently, if that makes sense, for the, for the youth that – we have today so um it was definitely a different transition i'm not even gonna lie to you i did mm -hmm. enjoy it it was easy money and then it was it was good money mm -hmm. so um it was enjoyable but it was definitely a transition for me 
uh, jazz, you work after school programs, uh, or you did in last, when, when school was in pop, popping. How was that? Because that's not that's not real basketball training. That's just like the Hall, Hall and Wizards and stuff like that. How was that transition? You got to turn your mic on, Jazz. Oh, yeah. You did. Say it again. Oh, yeah. I forgot I was muted. No, I was asking you, like, you said the transition, like, you felt like you had to talk to them different, like, in terms of, like, toughness, or, like, you had to take it a little more lighter on them, like. Yeah, because it wasn't real basketball training. It was more jokes and fun no, and was... stuff like that. Oh, I was I was asking Slinky because she said that she felt like she had to do do it differently. Oh. Like what different? Yeah, somewhat a little lighter. Um, a little light on them, right? Yeah, I mean, I started playing at a late age, and I was being coached tough, like tough love coach. Like right. I learned how to play basketball yeah. since the start period of time. So, you know, I came with tough love as well. But that's not that's probably not the best approach in training for this era, right? Um, Mark, honestly. Like I could see myself training kids. I could see what? myself. I, I, I could see myself from? training. <laughs> what? B because I was just thinking the whole conversation. Like everybody kind of like sound like they want to coach, and I like definitely don't want to like coach on a team. But I could see myself like training girls, and I could see where this came in was I can see that because, like, I, now that I work with kids, growing up, I always felt like, uh, I hate kids. Like, I don't want to work with kids. But now that I work with kids, it's just, like, they're not that bad. They just need extra love, like, <laughs> most of the kids. <laughs> and, um, so and, and guidance. You just got to have a lot of patience with them. They need – exactly. They need love, patience, and guidance. So yeah. that's what I learned, and I feel like I can see myself coaching because I'm passionate about the game, and I can teach them how to control their attitudes while still being passionate about the game. Because I feel like that's something I struggle with as a youth. I love the game <laughs> so much, and I would go so hard on myself and others that I would not be able to control my emotions. Like, so I feel like I got so much free game to give them. So I went and mind training, training girls. Okay. Uh, training is Deneza, definitely a way. What did you say, Danita? No, I said training is definitely a wave. It's Word. a wave. It's a wave. <laughs> oh, anybody hey, knows, you know, Mark. Mark, we about oh. to put you out of business, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool with me. <laughs> I know with I know with me, the coaching at the collegiate level, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. Be honest, like it's honestly just the. I can say I had the best experience in these two years. Like I had the best. I, I was under Tasha Pointer. Like there's nobody else. I don't think I could have been under. Like just learning the game from her. Um, she, she like just the way she breaks down the game, like strategically, like game planning. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. the tough. Tough, like just knowing, like tough love. But then again, this generation of kids, they are so weak, and I can't deal with it. I cannot. Um, oh, I guess that's just with me and my patience. But like this generation of kids, like the game is so soft, and it's just like I don't know how to teach that. I don't know if, if I. I think that's just something I gotta work on, just adjusting now, cause these kids now, oh my god. But um, more of the work aspect. Like I don't mind working. Like that's one thing, but. I just see the amount of work you got to put in and it's super time consuming. And I say to myself, like, dang, am I, if, like, am I going to be able to start a family with this job? Am I even going to be able to see my family? Like, this was my first time, like, I went to St. John's. So, you know, St. John's close to home. So I've been in, in Chicago these past two years and I just been in a situation where it was just like, dang, I miss my family. But then again, I was in university with losing my father. But, like, mm -hmm. just through that whole process, it was just like, dang I don't know and then now due to the coronavirus we had to you know work from home and then we're still working like damn near my whole time in the house I'm on the phone like, talking to recruits on zoom calls and I just been saying to myself like I don't know if I can do this but like that's why I've been looking more into maybe dobo position or even VC position or even like just Something other than culture. I don't know if I can do it. So I feel like right now I'm in a situation where it's just like, 
Damn, which, which are you really I ain't gonna hold you. The VC might be more of the backbone of the program than, <laughs> than the actual coaches. <laughs> I was gonna say that, um, today. Hey, you're right. What you think? Or, uh, VC, they, they, absolutely they, they true. The, the VC like position. That's a that's a very important position of the school. That's, yeah, that's a tough. That's a tough. That's one. a tough. Like you got to be good with computers and how to break down synergy and break down films and all they that stuff. They wanted ASAP. On the like on the I was spot, I was damn like, near a video coordinator. Like that was that was like my, <laughs> like no, we was basically video coordinators. Like <laughs> yeah, they finished but, the game. They already want you to break it down. Like on the bus. <laughs> yeah, but that but that that shows okay. you like you. That shows you that you know everything about the game, though, because now you're you're learning mm -hmm. every pick and roll situation. You know the stats for every position, every play. And I'm Erica. You could talk more about it because that's what you're doing now. Yeah, that that that's probably the best way to just learn. You know, more like you. Obviously, we all know the game, but just learn more in in, in detail, of, like how the coaches think. Like I learned how to do scouts. Know what I mean, like I know, like when I get, when the time come, like it's over. Like I'm ready. You know what I mean? Um, like you, it, it's a lot. Um, and, and with me, it's a little different because, you know, my bosses knew I wanted to be a, an assistant. Like I want to be a head coach. So I was in everything. Like I'm in everything. I'm in recruiting meetings. I'm in talking to recruits and I'm in, um, you know, I'm in, I'm in everything that, that all the coaches are in. Like I'm not secluded. Like, cause it's just like, Oh, you're the support staff. Like I'm in everything. Cause that's what I want to be. And I ask for more stuff to do because I want to be good at everything. So that when the opportunity arises, it's not like, Oh, I don't really know how to do that coach, but you know, I'm with you giving me the job. You know what I mean? I want to be ready. And that's just always how I've been. Um, like there's stuff obviously that you learn along the way. You don't know everything. Um, and your boss will understand that, but but like like D said, it is the backbone of the program. Like you you learn a lot more, but you learn a lot more detail about the game, and like you get to kind of see like what coaches really look at when they watch film or they're watching recruits. Like you can kind of like you really know kind of what to say. It's a little different if you haven't been in it. You like trying to evaluate a kid. You like oh yeah, she a bucket. Like it's different things on why we evaluate certain kids, how their bodies are, and like who they're playing against. Like, it's a lot more detail into it. Like, how would they fit in your program? Like, it's, it's a lot more. But but the video coordinator spot, like, if you really want to learn, like, everything and the ins and outs of, like, everything, like, that would be the spot. Like, you know, it's a lot of work, but that would be the spot to kind of help you get to becoming that assistant coach. I, I find it interesting that, Denasia, you went to St. John, ended up at Seton Hall. Slinky mm -hmm. never went back to Syracuse. Jazz never went back to Syracuse slash Wagner. Uh, Aaliyah left St. John's, went to the fucking West Coast, Midwest. Uh, Erica went to Dell State, ended up at uh, uh, FAU and um, Stony Brook. Why nobody went back home? Well, no, me personally. Nah, nah. Me personally, I, I wasn't that far removed when I decided to get into coaching. So there were still people there that I played with. And, and I kind of felt like, I didn't, I didn't want to have to deal with that. I didn't want to have to uh, put up those boundaries, you know what I'm saying, and, and make sure I wasn't trying to hang out with them. You know, even though I play with you, I can't – we can't interact how we used yep. to. And then I don't need I'll to be you. nobody's spy. Like, I'm not trying to okay, get information on what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah no exactly. Mm -hmm. so. I think right after I graduated, I just wanted to play ball. So I – I went pro right away. I think if I would have stayed and became a GA, um, I would have had better, a better chance of actually staying at Syracuse and possibly coaching there as well or becoming a dobo. But um, because I went pro immediately and I played pro for so long, um, you know, Syracuse developed while I was playing pro. They went to the Final Four. They, they did yeah. a lot. So, you they know, left your old ass behind. Now. Yeah, the coaches they have now <laughs> experience, played in the league. So me coming back from playing overseas for ten years, yeah, I have experience, but still I don't have the coaching experience. So Syracuse uh, is just completely different. Aaliyah, oh well, Aaliyah. Um, without bashing your school. Say it again. <laughs> without bashing your school. Um honestly, so when I decided to become a GA at the University of Illinois in Chicago, I had to go back to St. John's and I had to get my transcript. And 
at that time, that's when I relayed the message to them, and they were pretty shocked about the fact that I was going to be a GA somewhere else. And I don't know why I didn't ask them or anything, but I don't know. I just thought they wanted to pick me, but right. they, yeah, I just didn't think they would have picked me. But <laughs> when they found that I was going to UIC, it was more like, wow, why are you going so far? Uh, why are you didn't ask Joe? Da, 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 da. So okay. honestly, I just don't, I just don't know. Like, I just Jazz? Don't know. We don't want no handouts neither. <laughs> Right. There, there you go. <laughs> Jazz? Um, <laughs> I'll ask I you, Jazz. Um, I, I think if you had stayed at Wagner that last year, you would have been set for life. Yeah, I think I, yeah, I think I would have been cakewalking. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I think I would have been, uh, pretty well off, but honestly, why I didn't go back to Syracuse is because I just didn't see, you know, I didn't have, I didn't feel like I had those kind of relations where I wanted right. to reconnect after graduating. Right. And then why I didn't go back to Wagner is because they probably pissed that I left them high and dry. And, you know, but I, I did think about it, but then the principal, I mean, yeah, not the principal, the, um, like uh, the, the main person on campus, what's the, what's the name for that? Oh, president. Yeah, the president. Like, the president. Yeah, he said that if I wanted to come back and, like, get a scholarship, like, it's always open to that, but, I mean, another um degree is always open to that, but then he left, so I just yeah. never bothered to even go back there, so. Yeah, it's open. Uh, Erica? <laughs> um, for me, my, my, my coach got, um she basically retired as a head coach after my, my year after we graduated. Um, and then eventually she got back in and she's an assistant now at um, University of North Carolina Wilmington. Um, so, but I would have, I would have tried to go, but that would have been my first, you know, like, yo, like I'm trying to go coach in my alma mater. Um, I tried to, you know, I, I knew the new coach when she got there, uh, Natasha Adair. I met the whole staff. I was still living in Delaware when I was, cause I was trying to go pro. So I still had my apartment and everything. I was still using the gym and the weight room and stuff. So I got cool with them. Um, and our actually my dobo that was a dobo while my old my coach was there stayed as a dobo for two years with with Natasha. Um, and I tried to I tried to get back back to Delaware um, when I left FIU because um, they had a op they had an opening, but she kind of she kind of um, looked out for her Georgetown people, which is which is all good. I wasn't mad, right. Um, right. but I, I did I did try to go back. I know the AD there loves me. Um, a lot of people in Delaware love me, so I, I wouldn't mind going back. I always say one day I, I hope I'm, I end up being the head coach there for a little bit. Um, I love Delaware. I love the, the fan base and how much they support basketball. It's amazing. Um, Ain't nothing it's else to do over there. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not. It's, nothing to do. <laughs> it's absolutely nothing to do, but if you're just talking about the basketball aspect, it's great. Um, them, the, old, the fans, the old people out there, they support, man. Mm -hmm. They go hard. They still hit me up to this day. I don't even play ball no more. <laughs> know what I mean, Brilliant. they be on Twitter, Instagram. E, we miss you so much. You know what I mean? There's no other – like, it's crazy. When you coming back, um, they be sending me letters. I'm like, how you get my address? Like, what's going on? You know what I mean? That's kind of <laughs> yeah, like, you know what I mean? They send this stuff. I'm like, what the? They, I see, I see, I saw people at the airport. They screaming my name while I'm with my team. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. So, like, the support there is amazing. So, I could see myself eventually going back, but that's why I originally didn't. Um, I tried to try to get 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 with my coach and try to get her to get me connected. But the good thing was is that my assistant was a head coach now. So she looked out for me. So that it, it was kind of like full circle. It was just a different school. Like gotcha. she was, you know, she was my Delaware assistant, and she looked out for me when she became a head coach. So, hey, Lauren, hmm? Boogie, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you reached back out to Hofstra and um, yeah, Hofstra? I know it's a new staff though. It's a new staff. Yeah, it's a new staff. So I really don't have a relationship with them. Uh -huh. um, I mean, before I left, I would like help them out with workouts and, and things like that, but. I don't really have a relationship with them, but I was planning on reaching out to uh, Coach Santos because we did have a few conversations before I left. So, but like I said, Absolutely. I'm at the point right now. It's like if I reach out and I get something, that means I gotta give up playing. And do I want to stop? Playing? Like you know, so I'm at that. I'm at that right now. I mean, you, you could just I be did. honest too, though. Like you know what I mean. Like you could yeah. just tell her, like, look, you know, I'm on the verge of, 
I may still want to play, but I also may want to get into it. Like, uh, you know what I mean? Or eventually I do want to get into it. And right now I'm just, I'm just up in the air, especially with this whole COVID going on. Mm -hmm. Um, that you just don't, you could like, just be real where at the end of the day, like I'm all about being real. I hate when people fake and do all that. And they just talk. Just to, I hate that. Like I, I'm somebody that like, if I'm a head coach, I want you to be real with me at the end of the day. Cause if you genuine and real, I'm gonna look out for you at the end of the day, even if you decide to be, you know, I'm gonna go play pro when you done, I'm gonna look out for you. That's how I'm, I'm looking at things. So what I would tell you, and this is how I am with everybody, like, just be real with her. Listen, you know, I might want to get in. And I might want to go back. What's your advice? What could you, can you help me do? Like, you know what I mean? Would I be able to come back to Hofstra and help? You know what I mean? Like, would there be mm -hmm. any position? Or do you know people? Like, obviously, she was big time. She was at, you know, yeah, she, she, was was at, yeah. she was at Florida mm -hmm. State. Like, she was, she, was, she was places. You know, she knows people. She's been in this game a long time. Like, do you have anybody I could connect with, you know, to be a GA somewhere eventually when I do stop? If you do decide to go back and keep playing, um, I think if you be real, with coaches and people, like, I think at the yeah. end of the day, like, you know, they can't get mad at that because I'm being real with you. Because I'm not, if I sit here and lie and then just go, like, oh, now I'm going to go play the whole time, you telling her, oh, yeah, I'm going to come be a part of Hofstra. Like, you know right. what I mean? It kind of looks like, oh, that was fake. Like, so I'm just, like, just be real with her. Like, whatever. And then yeah. whatever happens, happens. You could definitely be real with them. I actually ended up turning down a job at Virginia Tech. Um, he, he called me and... And I was sitting there contemplating. I'm like, all right, do I want to? Like, I want to get back into this. Do I want to do this full time or whatever? But then I, I just ended up really telling him like, look, I, I kind of already accepted this prep school job, and uh, you know, I think I want to rock with that because it's a, the opportunity is like really good right now. It's actually a former NBA player who's there, and he's and the guy was like. He was like, no, I feel you. Like, it sounds like a good opportunity. Um, and I was just telling him, you know, I hope we could stay connected because just in case I ever get back into it, like, I hope we could work with each other. And he was like, yeah, absolutely, you know, save my number, all this stuff. So it's really, you know, everybody is pretty much cool around the basketball world. But what I did when I finally decided, all right, I'm done playing, it was, it was really just like a toss-up. It was like, all right, I still got my agent. And I'm a, I'm reaching out to all of these people. Um, like I'm filling out these applications, sending them my resume, and really whichever one come back first. That's how I decided. And it, like Tony ended up getting back to me first, offering me the GA spot at the hall. So I just took it. And honestly, I'm not going to say I regret anything. I'm not going to say at all because um, a part of me feels like this is something I might have explored once I was done playing. So for me to explore it now, I feel like, all right, I know what I like, what I don't like, and now I can move on to the next chapter. I could, I can explore some other stuff. I feel like. You just went dead. Your mic went dead. You got to go, to, you got to. Oh, I shit, we only did. You hear me? Yeah, there you go, you're back. Um, so, yeah, I think we're just young enough to explore different stuff. So even if you do feel like, um, you know, you kind of, it's, it's a bunch of stuff out here to do for us. And you don't have to do nothing with basketball. It really don't. Like, it's so much other stuff to do. So, uh, um, so before we leave, we're an hour in. And, I, and, I, and again, Jasmine said it, and I don't know if this is a reality. I, I definitely want to help as much as possible as far as getting it out there because you guys aren't alone. Like, Boogie, you're not alone. Jazz, you're not alone. Everybody, like, we got old heads over here. We got younger old heads. We got coaches in here. I think that's something that can grow because you guys need to hear it. Not necessarily you guys, but you guys know it, but, like, the younger kids coming up need to hear it. And as far as giving them opportunities to really get out there, and uh, I think that's something that is needed. And I think that somebody needs to be a middle person to get these people jobs. Like, I, I, I'm saying a person could be like, come to me, career placement, and I'll plug you in at the sales job at Verizon, because I know that right. most athletes have a good, strong work ethic. Right, most, I agree. Most, most athletes have, um, 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 they're, not, they're not afraid of the big time Leadership. situations. Um, they got big, you know, they got big hearts, um, and they work their ass off. So, I'm not saying yep, they discipline. <laughs> discipline, but some, that, 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 that's that's a market, I think, and that's something that you guys, because what ends up happening is the people that was with you in the beginning when you was that hot freshman back in the days, you know, they're not, they not with you as much as they used to be back in the days. For real. That's kind of that's kind, that's kind of fucked up, I think, but mm -hmm. it is what it is. So I would like to do it on a bi 
as we face, I don't know what your schedules are like, but right now ain't nobody doing shit because of uh, COVID-19. All right. Uh, <laughs> Think for yourself. Uh, you yeah, no, nah, we gotta do this again. <laughs> you said, think for yourself. <laughs> it's probably Mark, if you if you blast it on your media, it's probably a bunch of people out there that's that's uh you know in this way, don't really know where to go. So Yeah, I hope you record it. Right. Yeah, I'm like, willing to jump in on this. When on willing to yeah, jump in and share their story. Senior You want me to you want me to tag you guys and stuff and all that? Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, that's cool. All right, so just so that we can get more people, because I think a lot of stories, and this could be big. We don't know. I don't know. It could be boys and girls. It could be everybody, you know, something big. Everybody going through it. Boy, to be honest, boys go through it a lot, too. Don't let them fool you with yeah, their hopes. Nah, they do. Right. They go they, you just started, boys, Mark, you started a whole channel for this, Mark. Boys, too, you can get Mark, Mark show, Mark, start the show, Mark, show and <laughs> you can have <laughs> new people on your show every week. Set of guys, thank set of you. girls, a diverse group. Thank you guys. Group. Thank you guys. <laughs> I'm putting it out there. I'm doing too much. <laughs> thank you guys. I appreciate you guys. All right, appreciate you, Mark. All love. Later, y'all. Right. Later. Everybody, stay safe. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Stay safe. <laughs>